This video will demonstrate an all-software portable solution for sending Morse code over the Internet on ICW. On the first video for 2012 and using Windows 7, we demonstrated how to use, in the basic setup, just mumble and an external side tone generator using your mic in or your line in jack. On this video, we'll demonstrate how to use just software to send Morse code from a program like FL Digi our CW type directly to the mumble input. In order to do that, we need two other pieces of software besides FL Digi or, if you prefer, CW type. We need virtual audio cables to run and route the audio directly from FL Digi directly to the input of mumble. So we need basically two sound cards a regular sound card that's on a computer and a virtual kind of like a software sound card. The one we're going to use is called Breakaway Pipeline. So we'll need to go and I'll show you how to get those and install them and set them up. We need to download that first, get those set, then we'll download FL Digi. In order to hear your own side tone, we need a, another program that will monitor and play the audio that is on that virtual sound card. So this is a program that just taps in to one sound card even though it's a, a virtual sound card and then it'll play it on a second sound card. So we're going to have it tap into line one on Breakaway Pipeline and play it on our sound card. So we'll hear the output of Mumble and we'll hear the output of Pipeline 1 which is what FL Digi will be using to send its audio directly to the Mumble input. So using all software, we'll just type in here. And as you can see, the V's over on ICW in the testing room, the icon is lit up red, so I am sending. In the settings, you can see the V meter, so we are transmitting. So everybody else that may be in the same room as you can hear this just fine, but I can't hear my own side tone. So I need to use a program like SoundTap. I'm going to click Source, and now we can hear it. This is a very nice little program written by SM5VXC. So I'll stop that for now. We'll hit tab and it stops the FL Digi sending. So let's go ahead and show you how to get those pipelines first, then FL Digi and then SoundTap. You need to head over to the ICW site on our Google sites as you see up here, and I'll have these links in the video description. And we have written an article about the virtual sound cards called Best Virtual Sound Card for ICW. These are from Clayson Edwards, and the owner and author of these pipelines has made them available for free if you just download his trial demonstration version of one of his software products called Breakaway Live. So click on this link and go here. And we're going to download this demonstration version here, which will take you to this link. And here's the actual download. You get 30 days to mess around with this. This is really a great piece of software, too, this Breakaway Live. So it's a little expensive, but we don't have to buy it. But he allows us to use the virtual audio cables even after the expiration date of the actual software. And it's very gracious of him. This is fantastic for what we need to use for ICW. So download Breakaway Live, the download the demo version here. Go ahead and install and set that up. And then you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to load that software at all just yet. We actually don't even use this for ICW although you can play with it and do some fancy things but those are kind of advanced settings and there may be some other videos that I might do about that later. So once you've done that we also have to get uh, if you go up here to the forum we also have to get one other piece of software from him because on his virtual audio cables will be a lot of white noise unless another one of his products is running so we need a free product to be running since the other one's going to expire in 30 days. So go up to this forum site and then click on Breakaway Professional Products. 
scroll down to the latest software topic, click on that, scroll down to the tools section, and here's a free piece of software called Audio Resampler. Go ahead and download and unzip that file. And once it's unzipped, click on the exe file, the audio resampler.exe, and bring it up and run it. And it'll look something like this. We don't actually have to click the start button, but once this is up and running, it takes away all the white noise from any and all of his virtual audio cables. Once you've got Breakaway Live installed, we're going to need to adjust some of those pipeline settings. So let's go into the Windows Start menu, Programs, Breakaway Live, right click on Breakaway Pipeline Configuration, Run as Administrator, click that, I'll click Yes on the Windows Permissions, it pops up, and that will bring you to a screen like this. Yours probably will have three pipelines. I added an extra one up here under Driver Parameters. You can increase or decrease the amount of cables and click set. If you don't have three, then you have to have at least three of these. So click the up button until you have three and then click set. Highlight the first cable and we're going to change the sample rate of the lowest amount of sampling to 11025. It'll come default as 44100. So just type in 11025 and click set over here. The other thing we need to do for these is highlight and put a check mark in volume control and click set. Highlight, put the check mark in volume control, click set and you know each and every cable needs need to do that so all of these show that the volume control is enabled. If you get an error then one of the programs probably uh, is running some audio that you need to close. So you may have to close all the programs and run this process again so that this will take and allow you to set these things. Once you've got them all set and enabled then just click restart and that will restart all the audio cables again. Then you can click exit. Once you have those audio cables you should be able to see them in your Windows volume mixer. So right click on your speaker, click playback, and you should see them right here. Breakaway pipelines listed as some of your sound cards. If you don't see any of those there, you're going to need to enable them by right clicking into this space somewhere. Make sure you have a check mark by show disabled devices and a check mark by show disconnected, show disconnected devices. So that's all we need that for now. So click an X. So now we need to go and get FL Digi. You probably already know how to get CW types. So that's a very common one. So you can get that one as well if you want. But let me show you how to get FL Digi. FL Digi has a much better audio performance and CW sound to it as far as I'm concerned. Here's the link for it. So here's the download, so we'll go to the download page, and here's under Windows, this is the 3.21.39 at the current moment. This may change. These versions are constantly being updated, so go ahead and download and install that. Once you have that running and installed on your computer, bring it up, and it'll probably be not in CW, but in one of the other modes. So change it to CW by going to Op Mode and click CW. Then we're going to need to change the settings and activate the audio cards, the sound cards. Click Configure, click Modems, and it brings up all the settings. First thing we need to do is go to the Audio tab. Go to the right channel and click Modem Signal on left and right. Go to the Devices, and then click on Port Audio, and under Playback, Bring the drop down menu and then under Windows Direct Sound Devices, click Line 1 Breakaway Pipeline. So we're going to send Morse code to this sound card, to this virtual audio cable. You won't be able to hear it yet. On the capture, I just have my stereo mix selected. Now, if you want, to, if you want the same for yours, you're going to have to enable stereo mix 
right click on the speaker go to recording devices scroll down again you may have to make sure those are both checked marked if they are go to your stereo mix and if it doesn't say ready you have to enable it it'll sh it'll show enable instead of disable so I already enabled mine that's why disables here is an option then that'll be an option that you'll see in FL Digi so for now that's fine so under Windows Playback Devices I've selected Breakaway Pipeline 1 and then click Settings now these are the native sample rates and these seem to work best with SoundTap which is how we're going to monitor I have best sync interpolator however if your computer is not a quad core you may want to just use medium or fastest one of those two will work just fine but this you have to have a pretty good CPU otherwise it's going to bog it down but I have a i7 quad core on mine and it doesn't bother it at all okay so now go to modems tab and CW general and for the transmit, the upper limit, you can set this however high you want. It goes all the way up to 200 words a minute. It's, it comes default as 50. So if you want more than 50, then just click this upper limit. And for this slider, that will allow how much it goes from the low to the high. So I have the lower limit is 5. And the default is a great function for FL Digi. If you have on your number pad on your keyboard, right above the 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 uh, number nine should be a star button. At least it is on mine. But search for the star button over there, and when you click that star button, it will change whatever speed you're at, and it'll go down to the default. So if you had to send a difficult word or maybe a series of numbers or a telephone number or something you wanted to communicate, by hitting that star button, it'll immediately slow it down. If you hit the star button, it'll bring it back up to the speed immediately that it was at. So, that, so if you really need to slow down without having to hit the plus or minus button and wait, wait, wait for it to speed up or slow down, you can immediately go to this speed right here and then immediately back to the speed that you were at by hitting the star button in the number pad. That's a great advantage for FL Digi. So that's all for the general tab for transmit. Now go to timing and QSK. FL Digi uses raised cosine edges and try to keep yours at five or six for the most part. Otherwise it's going to be too hard on the keen. And you, as far as your preference goes, you can play with this to you like how you sound yourself. I like six and I like the black men raised cosine. You also have the, the typical one, the Hanning. But for Blackman, it's a little bit different and I like the weight to be just a little bit like this and the dash to bot, dot to be that. But generally, it'll come like this. And that's fine. So those are the major settings for FL Digi. Click Save, Close. For setting the volume, you want this to be zero because this is the attenuator on FL Digi. It'll be at minus three, so just click the second button to the right of that, take it to zero. This is the pitch for at on ICW we usually have everybody send at seven hundred. And yours it'll FL Digi comes at one thousand, I think, is the default. So you'll need to lower that by clicking on that second arrow to the left and just scroll it down till it hits seven hundred and it will save it bring up the modem and then just click save again okay and this red icon here is how you transmit so make sure this is clicked on red and now when you send it sends it over and as you see mumble picks it up so those are the major settings for FL Digi now let's go get sound tap and install it. Again, look at the link in the description, and it takes you to this page here. And at the bottom here of this list is SoundTap version 0.17.exe. Go ahead and download and install that and activate it. And go ahead and bring it up on the desktop. And it'll look like this. Then you just have to select 
pipeline one for the input and your wherever you're listening whatever your sound card is called mine is just the real tech and click that for the speakers and then click source and now we're good to go so let me slow that down again so I'm able to hear my own side tone as well as send it over to FL Digi I mean over to mumble and one of the things for adjusting your volume here go to configure modems timing in QSK whatever character you want send continuously you click that as long as this red button here TR is, is on it will send those O's continuously. Then left click on the speaker. As you see, you can adjust on pipeline one here the volume. You don't want it too high because that activates the mumble AGC circuit, as the first, first video talked about. So, right in, right in there sometime is good enough. And that's your regular speaker. You can adjust that however loud you want it to hear it, everything in general. So unche uncheck mark this and continuously. Close. Close. So everything seems to be working good now. So we have FLG Digi sending directly through that virtual audio cable over to the mumble input. I'm able to hear it on my speakers or on my headphones with sound tap. With, with just using all free software. So let's go up to the newcomers. And we have uh, ICOM remote. I hear the receiver audio there. So there's a couple things on Mumble that you can test to see if you're actually receiving anything. Make sure it's working. The way, the other thing that you need to do sometimes is to see how you're going to sound everybody else is use the Mumble loopback test. So unclick source, go into the modem again, and click that O. I'm sending but I'm not hearing, but we're going to go to the configure settings of Mumble settings, Go to the audio output, go to the loopback test here, click on server, and click apply. That's how I actually sound to everybody else. That sounds pretty good. Now if you wanted to, you could play with the weight. And you can sound how you're actually going to sound to everybody else that way. change the edge setting so this gives you a very good idea how you're actually going to sound to everybody else which may be slightly different than when you monitor the side tone with sound tap on your own computer okay so that's basically that remember to get out of server before you close everything out, none, and then click apply. Otherwise, nobody else is going to hear you, and you won't hear anybody else while you're in loopback test. So that basically sums up and demonstrates the total setup for a very portable solution with free software for sending Morse code over the Internet on ICW.